Welcome to the Seal of Stories. Now, so happy to have you here, Buzz, and also Silver. Silver. Yeah. Thank you so much. And um, we. <laughs> well, um, my name is Hans, and you are. Tamrin. Tamrin. Jamila. Jamila, thank you so Buzz. much for being here. And with uh, Silver and Buzz. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Tamrin here is also the founder of Academy for Dog Fun Smart Buzz, also joining with us. Today is Jamila, a student of Fun Smart Buzz Academy. And there's a reason why we invited them because today marks the International Dog Day. Now, let's see the history. International Dog Day is celebrated annually on August the 26th. The day celebrates all dogs, regardless of their breed and sizes. It is also aims at raising awareness about dog adoption and rescue. International Dog Day was endorsed in 2004 by Colleen Page a pet and family lifestyle expert, animal rescue advocate, conservationist, dog trainer, and an author. The date was chosen because they first adopted their first dog, Sheltie, on August 26th. There are many dogs around the world that need to be rescued. That I agree. Many of them are often abused, and some are even brutally killed for food. International Dog Day is celebrated to raise awareness about problems faced by dogs and to encourage people to take better care of dogs as they deserve to live a better life. Also, we have Silver and Buzz here in the studio. Jamila and Tambrin, thank you so much. Thank um, you. Okay, so probably uh, in this International Dog Day, I want to ask um, one thing. Um, how do we train our dogs? <laughs> because I have two dogs at home. I can train them how to sit and how to shake hands, but the things that Silver and also Buzz did was were actually amazing. How did you do that? Okay. Uh, first is that we actually have to want, know what we want to do or play with the dogs. Mm -hmm. you know? And then after that, we have to set a discipline okay. to ourselves okay. and to the dog as well. Okay, so also yeah. to ourselves. Yeah, to ourselves. Okay. Because uh, we, as an owner, we have to be, we must actually uh, do it together with our dog. We cannot just let other people train the dog mm -hmm. because the dog mm -hmm. will listen to other people. Oh, that's yeah. logical. Yeah. I see. And, and then? You know, of course, you need to find the right trainer, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, like an academy, fun yeah. smart academy, yeah. actually to train you, mm -hmm. not the dog. So they train me, 
and I train my dog. I see. That's how we do it. Yeah. So basically, it's us who learn about it, yes. not the dog. So, uh, Tamrin, in this case, how should we begin the training? Yeah, mungkin Bu Jamila yang yeah. gituin, yang ngomongin ya. Uh, how to begin the training is that first, of course, we have to understand what kind of breed we are dealing with, mm. okay? And then what we want uh, the dog able to do, mm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And after that, find the right trainer, okay? okay? And then when once you are um, involved to the training session, yeah, yeah. then you have to have a very strong strong heart and will mm -hmm. to finish it. Okay. So the dog will accomplish something okay. with you. Okay. So, uh, Tamrin, tadi kata uh, Bu Jamila, uh, beda breednya, beda mm -hmm. jenisnya, beda mm -hmm. juga cara penanganan. Mm -hmm. Boleh kasih contoh? Ya, jadi contoh misalnya setiap jenis itu berbeda seperti speednya, powernya seperti pak, itu kan badannya besar jadi speednya pasti berkurang. Jadi kita uh, cara penanganannya juga beda, cara lompatnya mm -hmm. juga beda. Tapi bas, tapi kalau misalnya dengan satu jenis pun kadang-kadang juga sifatnya berbeda. Ada yang uh, priang, ada yang penakut, ada yang pendiam, nah itu juga berbeda. Jadi intinya setiap karakter atau setiap jenis itu bisa beda-beda. Nah sebagai pelatih kita mesti lihat apa yang mesti didahulukan. Nah apa yang dulu dahulu misalnya contoh anjing yang penakut berarti kita terapi dulu. Kalau anjingnya galak berarti kita bikin tenang dulu, kepatuhan dulu. Okay. Nah kalau anjingnya agak normal nah berarti kita boleh start langsung ke skill plus kepatuhannya baru gimmick dulu. Alright, so according to Tamrin, basically different breeds also have different trainings. Hmm. Let's say for silver, um, for pug which has a, like a big build, um, probably the speed is not uh, as fast as buzz in the sense, yeah. uh, for, for an yeah. instance. And also we need to see the nature of the dog itself. If the dog is uh, a tearful dog or um, a scared dog. Yeah. Mm. Um, and uh, for that uh, particular reason, you have to do some therapy for, uh, let's say, uh, for, for a scared dog. Mm -hmm. You have to do the therapy for, um, you know, how, how they became brave and something like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also for some fierce dog, how they, how they could train to be obedient, something yeah. like that. And uh, okay, so for Silver, yes. What was actually your problem uh, when training Silver? Ah, uh, uh, she likes, she loves food. Oh. So when don't I... we all Silver? Rakus <laughs> dia. <laughs> yeah. So when uh, I train her without no food at all, then she will sometimes ignore me. She feel like where's the reward? It's mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So. Uh, I have to build the habit uh, slowly okay. from every every trick I give a lot of food mm -hmm. like a snack yep. and then uh, after several times or sometimes then I have to reduce it okay yeah otherwise she will have a high demand for the food I see. and she will not just do whatever I ask her to do. So that also trains uh, the obedience side of silver. Yeah. In that case. Okay, Tamrin. Mm -hmm. Kalau tadi uh, untuk anjing-anjing uh, dengan sifat-sifat tertentu, misalkan mm -hmm. ada traumanya, mm -hmm. di diterapi dulu traumanya. Mm -hmm. uh, itu untuk anjingnya. Tapi untuk kita sendiri sebagai mm -hmm. uh, pemilik anjing yeah. atau let's say trainernya gitu ya, trainernya. Apa yang harus kita persiapkan? Oke, okay, yang kita persiapkan adalah sebenarnya uh, apa namanya? rutin, hmm. jadi jangan malas-malas, kadang-kadang latihan besok enggak, terus kedua um, ya tadi kenal seru pengetahuannya dulu apa yang mesti anjing ini dibutuhin dulu awalnya, hmm. ya. Nah ketiga timing, hmm. jadi ownernya itu jangan telat seperti um, kasih dia pujian, hadiah, makanan tadi atau mainan, uh, begitu juga dengan koreksi. Nah kita nggak boleh telat. Nah jadi okay. Ya, itu tiga poin itu paling penting sih. Untuk jadi orang. tadi yang pertama adalah rutin. Rutin yang atas, ya, jadi jangan malas-malas malas ya. Yang kedua, uh, apa yang dibutuhin dulu anjingnya? Apa yang dibutuhkan anjingnya uh, kemudian timing. Timing. Oke. Okay. Reward maupun punishment. Ya. Well, according to Tamrin as well, uh, uh, the first uh, thing that we need to uh, pay attention to is also what the what kind of trauma that a dog would have. Hmm. That also the thing that we need to uh, put uh, the therapy first. Yeah. But uh, for us, as the owner and also the trainer, we have to be able to focus on three things. The first one, you have to be a routine. Mm -hmm. You make it a routine in your, in, in, in your days. Do not 
get bored mm -hmm. of uh, yeah. you know train your dogs from one day to another like it's like a day-to-day -day basis yeah. so uh, uh, the second one know what your dog needs mm -hmm. you have to know what your dog needs um, as if uh, like silver, silver what Jamila yeah. said uh, so silver was actually quite greedy of food yeah like <laughs> yes. I am but um, also uh, the third one is the timing you you know uh, when to give compliments you know when to tackle if there is any problems mm -hmm. with your dogs and also uh, you know all the timings needed to be uh, done with uh, your dogs so Jamila yes. are there any tips for people who want to strengthen the bonds of the okay if you want to actually have a good bond with your dogs, then you have to attend to the dog. Okay, you, you cannot ask people to look after the dog, mm -hmm. yeah, while you just want to see uh, a nice, good uh, dog like mm. that. But you have to deal with the dog, you have to spend time with the dog, you also must to really uh, take a good care of the dog, mm. okay, and don't do harsh things to the dog. Because doing harsh thing to the dog, that will lead to the difficulty when we want to train the dog. Mm -hmm. Because we create the trauma actually. Okay. It's for example like hitting the dog oh, yeah. or you know pushing the dog with your feet. Because when we uh, go into the training, oh, yeah. sometimes we have to do some sign language or some kind of like work like just now I did with the hand like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, or maybe the feet, yeah. the foot. <laughs> yeah, so if you, <laughs> that's how good it is. Uh, so when you use your hands or feet, mm -hmm. yeah, or sometimes scold the dog harshly, mm -hmm. then the dog, uh, you build fear, okay. you know, uh, in the dog mm -hmm. toward yourself. Yeah. That's going to make it difficult to train the dog. I see. Yeah. I see. So uh, how long did it take you to be able to train silver uh, from uh, the very first day until, um, oh, until now. this uh, level yeah. of, of obedience. Okay, uh, let's just say that I have been with Smart Smart Academy for three years. Three years? Yes, <laughs> three years. Wow. Yeah, because Pak is actually uh, not an easy breed to train. They are stubborn, mm. they are lazy sometimes. Mm -hmm. They like to, you know, just looking for food, yeah. lay around like that. <laughs> <laughs> And I have been training my pups since they are two months old. Okay. Two months old. Yeah. I've right. already played with them. So, uh, uh, Tamrin, mm -hmm. uh, dalam waktu uh, berapa lama yang ideal mm -hmm. sebenarnya mm -hmm. untuk seseorang bisa uh, melihat bahwa uh, training ini sukses gitu? Oke. Okay. <coughs> Jadi kalau dia start dari umur dua bulan anjingnya mungkin setahun lah. Hmm. Nah, cuman kalau kenapa Bu Jamila tadi bilang tiga tahun, karena dia masuk zona kompetisi. Nah, oh, seperti nice. kayak atlet sepak bola. Hmm. Jadi dia mesti butuh dengan uh, lapangan bolanya. Nah, jadi dia butuh dengan simulasi uh, taktikalnya. Hmm. Nah, jadi dia butuh tetap klub. Nah, tapi yeah. kalau hanya untuk pet rumahan, sebenarnya dengan setahun atau setengah tahun dia udah selesai. Terus nah. uh, jenis anjing apa mm -hmm. yang paling sulit untuk diajar? Kayak tadi kan yeah. Bu Jamila bilang kalau ini cukup yeah. susah diajar Bas. karena karena sifatnya. Mm -hmm. Terus uh, tipe anjing apa yang paling gampang <laughs> untuk diajar? Oke, okay, yang paling gampang sebenarnya jenisnya hampir semua gampang. Kecuali yang tadi yang susah itu moncong pesek. Jadi pak oh. bulldog, French bulldog. Karena nafasnya pendek, jadi gak oh. capek. Oh. Nah, kalau yang selebihnya berarti kan gampang. Cuma kalau bas ini apa nih? Uh, ini jenisnya malinois. Malinois. Ya, cuman kalau yang dibilang gampang itu kalau dia suka mainan dan suka makan. Hmm. Nah, itu gampang nanti. Oh, my dog. Ya. I have some yeah, two some yeah. Suka dua-duanya, suka makan. Suka, suka makan dua-duanya, suka ya, makan dua-duanya. Nah, itu gampang. Maka suka main juga dua-duanya. Yes. Good. Jadi bisa buat latihan skill tuh makannya. Yeah. Alright, so uh, the, according also to to uh, uh, Fun Smart uh, uh, Academy, the ideal uh, time span for you to be successful on training your dogs might be from two months to one year. So there's no uh, certain ideal time or certain measurement, but when it comes to what kind of dog breed, uh, uh, which is usually like very hard to uh, to train to be trained, um, are the flat nose breed, like uh, pug, French bulldog, because 
they have short breath, mm -mm. but um, the easiest type of the easiest breed uh, to be trained is actually uh, the breeds who uh, love to play and also love to eat. Yeah. Yeah. That is actually the easiest one. All right, see the stories will continue after the break. Silver, Tamrin, and also Jamila and Buzz, also Silver. Don't go anywhere. Mm.